Is the M1 MacBook Pro still a good laptop to buy in 2025? Don't let its age fool you. The M1 MacBook Pros are still incredibly powerful and have lots of life left to give nearly four years after release. Let me introduce you to my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. I bought this laptop at launch in 2021 and I configured it with a 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, M1 Max chip, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte SSD. I was completely blown away when I got this laptop. Truly the greatest leap in computing I've personally ever experienced. And the fact that it came in a relatively small package, had 18 hours of battery life and ran almost silent was unbelievable. Nearly four years into the life of this laptop and it's every bit as good as when I first unboxed it. Let's talk about why this laptop is still such a great choice in 2025 and why I think it's an incredible deal you can get right now if you're in the market for a high performance laptop on a budget. So first, let's talk about performance and capabilities. To preface this, I'm not a benchmark guy. There's tons of benchmarking videos from about four years ago on this machine. If you wanna see how it compares on paper to some of the newer Apple Silicon MacBooks, you can go check those out but I just wanna talk about my personal experience as someone who does video editing and motion graphics animation for a living and has been using this laptop for the last four years. Make no mistake, the M1 Max is still ridiculously fast in 2025. As a reference point, I bought a base model 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro a year ago because I liked the smaller form factor and I figured out I could benefit from a single core speed boost in some applications with the M3 but my 16 inch M1 Max is still overall a more performant laptop. I do a lot of work inside of After Effects and preview performance is often faster on my M3 MacBook Pro, which is why I got the M3. But when I'm using loads of effects and working on more GPU intensive projects, my M1 Max MacBook Pro is still hands down faster when previewing animations. When I'm editing in Adobe Premiere, everything is of course incredibly smooth, playing back high res footage with loads of effects and color grading, it's no match for the M1 Max. That really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who's followed the M series MacBooks because even the M4 MacBook Air I recently did a review on can handle surprisingly heavy editing loads. I've never hit a ceiling on my M1 Max as far as editing is concerned. All of the work I do as a professional is not ultra intensive by any means, but I think you'd have to be doing a pretty intense project to run into any kind of slowdown. I do very little 3D work, but the little work I have done, this machine handles with ease, of course, and it could handle a lot more. To put it plainly, if you're a creative professional or someone who does more intensive tasks on your computer, the M1 Max is very capable even four years later and can easily outperform my M3 MacBook Pro on GPU heavy tasks. It's honestly more powerful than most people need. Now, full disclosure, I'm mostly daily driving my M3 MacBook Pro at this point, but like I said earlier, I like the 14 inch form factor and additionally, the specific work I often do in Adobe After Effects benefits from that better M3 single core performance. But as soon as I start working on a beefier effects heavy project, my M3 Pro buckles under the pressure and my M1 Max saves the day. Same deal when editing video. I very seldom work on a project intense enough to slow down my M3 MacBook Pro, but I have hit a ceiling a couple of times before switching to my M1 Max to yet again save the day. That's why I keep my M1 Max around. And honestly, now that I've got an M4 MacBook Air that is very capable, I feel comfortable using that as my portable option. And I've been considering just getting rid of my 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro entirely and just docking my M1 Max at home again as my main workstation. So we've established that it is still plenty capable, but why do I think this is worth buying in 2025? After all, it is nearly four years old, which is kind of old as far as laptops and technology is concerned. Well, what really blows my mind is the fact that this laptop still feels brand new almost four years later. The build quality, the screen, the performance, it's just like the day I unboxed it. And the battery life, still incredibly good. I checked my battery health and it's at 91%. The battery still lasts a full workday and often even longer. That's me doing video editing, motion graphics animation, and work inside of Adobe Illustrator nearly all day long. The battery life started off so insane that the battery would have to degrade to like 50% before it even matched a brand new previous gen MacBook Pro back in the Intel days. So it's crazy to say, but I don't think the battery degradation is all that big of a deal on these old M1s. My experience in general with the M1 Max is a complete night and day difference from my experience with Intel MacBooks. Before the M series, I went through three different Intel MacBooks in just four years, and they were a disaster. They were horrible. 
I had issues with the displays malfunctioning, the keyboard was a nightmare. On all three of those Intel MacBooks, they all had issues with the keyboard. And I was pretty consistently running into issues with the Intel MacBooks overheating and crashing. I was nearly ready to jump ship on Apple, but the M1 Max, zero issues, zero regrets. I feel like this laptop will easily last another four years, no question. And that's obviously important if you're considering buying something used. I was a little nervous about the keyboard to be honest because of my issues with the previous Intel MacBook Pros and the butterfly keyboard, but the keyboard was redesigned for the M series Max and it's way better. I've had absolutely no issues since buying this back in 2021. With all of that said, here's where the good deal comes in. You can pick up my exact machine, the M1 Max with 32 gigabytes of RAM for around a thousand bucks right now. That's an insane value considering it can handle just about anything you throw at it from video editing to 3D rendering, photo editing, heavy multitasking, and these laptops still have a lot of life in them. And if you want to save even more money, get the 14 inch M1 Pro. It's still going to be more than powerful enough for most people. And don't be fooled by the marketing hype around the newer MacBooks. Trust me, I get it. I fall into the same trap. The M1 Max is still more than powerful enough for 99% of professional workflows. Sure, it's not the newest chip on the block. It's not going to have the longevity of a brand new machine, but it's more than enough for most creators. And it's well worth it if you're on a budget. And look, I get it. Buying a used laptop can feel like a gamble, even if it is an Apple product. You never really know what you're gonna get. And I'll be honest, I personally always buy new, but that's because I'm very fortunate to be able to afford it. So I'm not gonna lie to you and say that you won't ever have an issue buying something used. It's certainly a possibility. But if you're not in the position to drop $3,500 on an M4 Max MacBook Pro, then grabbing a used M1 Max might be a good option for you, even if there is a small risk of something going wrong. So yeah, almost four years later, the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro is still one of the best laptops you can buy and price factored in, it's an incredibly good deal in 2025. I will personally be keeping my M1 Max until the day it dies. And I look forward to making a video on however many years when it finally does, so I can tell everyone how long it lasted. Let me know in the comments, are you still an M1 owner still going strong? Let others know how awesome it is in the comments section. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos like this one. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time on SparkPoint.